us today and will be posted on our YouTube channel. So go ahead, Simi, and, and kick us off in the recording. Good to go. Good stuff. So we'll start off with, um, my name is Diego, and I am the Mentorship Program Lead, uh, and I am joined today by Simi, who is in the behind the scenes helping us with Zoom and, and other things as well in the chat. Thank you, Simi, for also joining us. To start off, I want to provide a land acknowledgement, and we would like to acknowledge that the land in which we gather has been and still is the traditional territory of several indigenous nations, including the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Wendat, the Metis, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Since the time immemorial, numerous indigenous nations and indigenous peoples have lived and passed through this territory. We recognize this territory as covered by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty and the Two Row One Boom Treaty, which emphasizes the importance of joint stewardship, peace, and respectful relationship. Sheridan affirms that it is our collective responsibility to honor and respect those who have gone before us, those who are here, and those who are yet to come. We are grateful for the opportunity to be working and living on this land. All right, thank you for that, Simi. I want to welcome Sean as well to the conversation. Good to have you. We're just kind of getting started, Sean, and, and uh, we're going to go through a quick Zoom orientation. As I mentioned, Simi is behind the scenes helping us uh, in various ways through uh, Zoom and its various features. But one of the main features of Zoom is the chat, which I encourage you to use to ask questions. Um, and just to engage, and we'll look at the chat pretty regularly to, to make sure that we are responding to any questions you may have. While you're not speaking, as, as most of you are doing, uh, keep your, your uh, mic muted and uh, unmute it when you'd like to, to uh, speak. You're more than welcome to share your video uh, or not. And um, I want to make sure, Simi, I'm not missing anything on the on the Zoom quick orientation. Okay. No, that's perfect. Um, also, Sean, just in case you missed it, we are recording this session, so we just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Good stuff. Thank you for that reminder. There's Simi. You can go ahead and go on to the next slide. Our agenda for today is to provide a quick welcome uh, and introduction of, uh, uh, around what EDGE is and what we do. And we'll go through some introductions as well, opportunities to, to practice our pitches, some, some feedback, uh, questions, comments, shared experiences. We'll go into the rounds where we will share challenges, questions, and our shared experiences around digital marketing and, and leveraging the power of digital marketing to, to attract our, our key target audience. And then we hope to encourage everyone to take actions after these sessions to, to connect with each other and also to take actions in terms of some of the things that, that you feel are elements of the conversation that you can take action on in the short term. Uh, go ahead and switch to the next one. And so to kick us off, uh, Edge, which stands for Entrepreneurship Discovery and Growth Engine. We are an impact-focused startup incubator that offers resources, mentorship, community training, and more for early-stage entrepreneurs and change makers. We are building on Sheridan's uh, culture of creativity. We provide support to entrepreneurs, uh, and, and we are very proud to support sole proprietors, side hustlers, social entrepreneurs, non-for-profit leaders, and, and globally scalable tech ventures that uh, are part of our membership. We have four programs. You can go ahead and switch. Um, we have four programs that focus on various phases of, of a venture, the ideation phase through our Explore program. 
which is intended to support in generation of ideas and exploring entrepreneurship. If it's if, if you are stepping into entrepreneurship as a new entrepreneur or a, an aspiring entrepreneur, we have our LEAP program, which we focus on discovery and working on a, def on a defined business idea that you may have and looking to validate that idea through more research. Um, and we move on to our RISE program, which is in the validation stages, build on, try to build on that foundation that will help you gain initial traction, uh, or you may find that you're at a point where you're developing your, your prototype or your minimum viable product or MVP for short, or you may also be building a team. So we support ventures who are at that stage. In our last program, our SOAR program, is, it's based off of efficiency, meaning you are seeing growth in your venture in the form of revenue, recurring revenue. Um, you're also refining and improving your, your offering with your service or product-based company. And you're preparing to reach that scale where you would like to grow into a, a larger organization beyond your founding team. In 2019, we've had quite a few events and programming. We've had over 3,500 participants, 140 networking events, training and funding events. Go ahead and next slide, Simi. Thank you. And Mentor Mondays, is the, the idea behind Mentor Mondays is to connect the community together. We have folks from California, we have folks from the Mississauga area, and we've had folks in the past from other parts of the world, especially with, uh, with the situation with COVID. It's been a lot easier to connect with other people beyond our local um, local community, which is great. So the idea is that Mentor Mondays can support the community by providing mentorship opportunities, bringing in experts, really having a platform where people people and attendees can share their experiences, building a venture, and ultimately is to um, engage the community a lot more, to bring in those uh, experts, and to create a stronger bond uh, between our community here at EDGE and beyond. Go ahead, yeah. And uh, again, my name is Diego and I'm also an entrepreneur and the manage manager of the program, of the mentorship program. And I also mentor as well, some of the ventures here uh, at EDGE. And now this is the, this is the fun part, this is where we get a chance to practice uh, practice some pitching. Um, also, share about your you know share your experience with entrepreneurship. So, in terms of the format, you know we're we're a small group today. So, for anyone who's uh, who's who would like to practice their pitch, idea it would be great if we all try to. But what I'm what I hope we could do is take each person take forty five seconds to practice their their elevator pitch um, and I think we, we have we can maybe do a little bit more in terms of the time because we're a small small group so if you'd like to take anywhere between you know a minute let's try to keep it at max two minutes to to, to share your pitch uh, and and um, from there after the pitch we will give the opportunity to the rest of the, the room to to ask questions uh, or Seek, seek some more clarity around the business or provide feedback and, and, and comments. In terms of some of the housekeeping rules around the feedback and comments, try to limit the, the you should do, but rather instead try to ask follow-up questions or, or say you may want to consider or, or things like I suggest uh, as a way to provide your comments and feedback. Uh, so, how about we, we get started? Would anybody like to take the floor? Hello? Hi, Yatunde? Hi, Yatunde, actually. I O for sure, if you want to say that. Uh, can you repeat that? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you repeat your first name? I, I want to make sure I say it properly. Oh, yeah, sure. It's Io. It's A Y O. Yeah. Got it. Io. Gotcha. Can you just clarify as to you what you mean by uh, elevator pitch? Yeah, elevator pitch is if, let's say, you happen to have a very, very minimal amount of time to share what your business is about with someone, what would be 
what would be that short um, snippet that you would share with with someone about your business? Okay, so not not the definition essentially, but I just mean like, do you want us to just go in depth as to uh, what the business is about? Is that yeah, I think you- a good framework would be maybe your name, what your business is about. Okay. Yeah, that could be a good start. Okay, great. So uh, again, my name is Ayo. Uh, essentially, what the business is about is catering to Afro-Caribbean um, market. So essentially what we do is, all we're trying to do is um, to pretty much provide food delivery options for the Afro-Caribbean um, community. Uh, we're trying to build a community not through, not just through uh, entertainment, not just through anything else, but just through food. Um, that is what I would say is the primary goal of the business. Great. Thanks for sharing. No problem. And are you based out of, uh, are you based out of Canada or are you yes. also international? Okay. Are you an, are you a member of edge? Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. All right. I just joined actually. Oh, well, great. To, great to have you. No and how long ago did you start the, the venture? Um, it's going, it's well into, I'd say about a year now. Okay. Um, I'd say I'm pretty much still in the ideation phase. I'm trying to move on to the next phase where I'm actually using, you know, surveys, um, you know, different techniques and different things to actually build up the business, build a team, have a clear vision, and then actually move from there. And would you say that you are already like in the market, uh, actively selling your, your offering, or are you still in that process where you're trying, you're working towards entering the market? Oh, we're working towards entering the market. So we're trying to still build off, um, user target, we're trying to get more uh, surveys, just anything else that we can use to just validate our, what our plan is essentially. No, that's a, that's a wonderful approach just to get, you're getting a better understanding of, uh, of your, your, ultimately your, your folks that are going to buy your services, right? Exactly. Exactly. Good stuff. Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else, anybody have any questions? Um, it's only it's just us two and, and, and as well as Simi, so feel free to feel free to jump in. Today we have a smaller group. Feel 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 free to jump in, huh? <laughs> There's only two of us. Um, I'm in the process of pivoting, and um, I guess for everyone's benefit, the uh, uh, the the venture, the business that. I launched earlier around April um, is a uh, uh, it's a commercial product that's an extension of the volunteer work that I, that I've been doing for the past six years. Um, so it's basically online support for men. So it's online support groups as well as um, coaching and helping men get their sugar together uh in order to become the the best version of themselves uh and the reason that i'm pivoting is um uh it's not because there's no interest it's just that it's um uh, it's proven to be uh not a as a as a standalone um business it's not proving to be viable uh, it's looking to be more like a page in a book or another way is book is, is looking at it as being a feature or an extension of something else that I'm already doing. Um, so that being, being said, what I'm exploring is, um, is actually, um, helping early stage startup with their ideation and personal narrative process. Um, the one thing that I noticed that there's a lot of is there's a lot of the back end in terms of startup. There's a lot of uh, infrastructure and institutional uh, accelerators, uh, specifically in tech. Uh, but for the smaller startups there's there's not a lot in terms of uh helping people tap into what their own personal brand is gotcha. and, 
And that's, that's, that's what I'm exploring. The other thing is, um, the other part gets a little murky. So it, it's, it, it's based on the idea that, that, um, um, social enterprise, um, so social enterprise incubation and acceleration information, um, and tools are not accessible to marginalized communities, uh, mainly because of their institutionalized structures, so schools, uh, as well as other uh, business incubators. And I'm looking at making that more accessible uh, by using uh, first person storytelling through social media. I know it sounds really convoluted, but um, it, it, that's, that's, that's sort of the working idea right now. And I'm trying to flush that out. Okay. sounds like that's, that's where you're sort of where you're at currently in that sort of, that's right. Pivot, yeah. in that pivoting, pivoting sort of process. Um, yeah. Like early stage, um, um yeah okay and and maybe maybe we can take this opportunity to talk a little bit about like uh our our backgrounds um and then move on to some of the the actual um, the rounds of of you know discussing challenges questions and providing some shared experiences around where we're at and how that ties into digital marketing um, so in terms of the, um, maybe a question, uh, I like to flip over to, uh, IO before you started your, your venture and so how did you come up with the idea? What did you, what, 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 uh, sort of like what popped into your, in your journey? Tell us a little bit about how you, how you came up with the idea and maybe your background. Sure. Uh, so essentially I did, um, entrepreneurship it's a, it's a class i did in school in etm uh it teaches you about discovering the needs or the problem which you can then uh, provide a solution um so essentially what i just thought of is just a random day i was just thinking about food i didn't have much time to make food and um i just looked out just thinking to myself there's no website or no app that has this thing i'm looking for so I started to do research about it just to see how I can actually uh, fix this, not just for everyone, but for myself, actually. So it's something where I don't just want to just market it to people. I actually see it as something I can actually use because I don't have enough time to do what I need to get done because I spend too much time worrying about food. So it came through as an idea. I was just thinking to myself, um, you know, why don't I just look for actually, you know, a way of doing this. So not only me, it's not only me who is actually dealing with this problem, I know for sure, for sure. So it's something I thought to myself, why don't I just create a product or a service where I can actually cater to, uh, you know, different people like me who have the same problem. Mm. That's great. So it sounds like you, you were in, in some formalized education around entrepreneurship, like you mentioned, a course or class. Yeah. And through there, you started thinking about what are some of the, like specifically with food, which by the way, I spend a lot of my time thinking about food. Also. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so you were, you were thinking about, well, how can I address this problem that I have uh, and, and maybe use the entrepreneurship learning that I'm capturing to go practical with it and try to build something out of it, start to research. Am I on the right track there? That is exactly what it is. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. And so it's been a year journey that you're sort of been in that, in that ideation stage, I guess. Uh, honestly, it's been, it's been a year just because I haven't really, you know, spent the time to actually do research and actually, uh, put a lot of effort into it. Cause I work as well full time. So, right. uh, it's a little bit difficult to actually put time, um, to do both things, but now I do have time or I actually have better time management. So, yeah. um, it's making it a lot easier for me to actually do these things by, I guess, joining the edge. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think the, the, I think uh, entrepreneur's dilemma is trying to figure out how to how to uh, build something and also be able to pay your bills. Exactly. <laughs> so part of that is trying to 
do the balancing act of working full time and figuring out how to how to carve out energy to to build something beyond beyond your your full time. So exactly. thanks for thanks for sharing a bit of your journey there and and um, Sean, you and I have had conversations about your journey, but maybe for Io and and Simi, uh, maybe you can share with us a little bit of your background as to how you came to think about the uh, the support for men, but also how you you start like you know transitioning into this this sort of uh, pivot that you're making. I think you're on, you're on mute, Sean. Thank you. So, uh, as I mentioned briefly, I've been running um, support groups for about the past six years uh, in the G GTA, specifically for men, uh, men who are survivors of childhood trauma. Uh, orig originally, I was running the groups in Toronto for an organization called Abuse Hurts. And for the, since July 2000, 18, uh, been running those groups through Family Services Appeal. And since uh, COVID hit, we've moved uh, uh, through WebEx, so we've been doing it online. And one of the things that's interesting to note, where we are the only uh, federally funded, because Family Services Appeal is a federally funded organization, uh, to my knowledge, we're the only federally funded uh, male support group running virtually in the province. So, yay. Um, and um, it, I, I had the benefit of, 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 of being on the Oprah show a couple of years ago and that, or last year, and that was sort of the impetus to, to move it out of the volunteer space into the for-profit space, or at least into a, a social enterprise space. And um, and then um, when COVID hit, it seemed like a perfect time to um, uh, reach out through um, uh, different plat platforms to make it available to a wider audience. Um, to to be very candid, um, even though. There's, there's, even though according to the agencies, there has been an, uh, a dramatic increase in the number of men reaching out, looking for support during this time frame. Um, there has, that has not uh, reflected in a sizable increase in men contacting me through the website, looking to get their quote unquote sugar together. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's like, I, I'm, that's a passion. So that's, that will continue. Um, and like I said, it will likely remain a, a feature of, um, of something else. Um, and, um, over the past couple months, I've had the benefit of, of being part of, um, Sheridan's working group on uh, inclusivity. Um, and through that, I benefited from listening to different people speak. And I think it was not necessarily a perfect storm, but it, it was the, the coming together of different ideas. So this, this pivot uh, started with um, a thesis statement. Um, and the statement that I came up with is, Social enterprise, incubators, and accelerators are, in, are both intimidating and not easily accessible. Um, and the reason that came up was uh, last month, um, there's a gentleman by the name of Ryan O'Neill Knight. I'm not sure if you folks know of him. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he was speaking about um, that dur during the first wave, um, of government assistance being extended to businesses that in the region that he works and and just for clarity um, he's the president of the African Caribbean business net network um, so within his business network and and the folks that he's he's associated with the major I'm not gonna say the majority but but there was a large per per percentage of that population um, who did not have access to the government made available funding in terms of the support programs 
And the, one of the main reasons is that did, they didn't even know that it was happening. So they weren't registered. Uh, they, 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 they weren't, um, um, they weren't traveling in the circles that, that would have helped them uh, get funding for the business, funding for themselves and support for employees. Um, and that led me to believe that, um, so I took a step back and looked at a social enterprise um, and, and, and came up with my definition of it where a social enterprise seeks to identify and bring about potential societal change and address problems uh, that don't necessarily attract private capital. Um, typically a social enterprise aims to benefit a group um, or a marginalized segment uh, where that group doesn't necessarily have the means or the resources to to affect the change that they're looking for. And I tried to reduce things down down to very basic parts. So there's um, the, the community members that are being affected and there's the technology. And the technology is either knowledge or resources or tech. Right. And and the goal that I saw was to add new community members to the existing system <clears throat> and then change the way that information is, is disseminated. So putting more tools in hands. Right, right. And um, the way that I thought about doing that was through social media. Because right now, um, right now, um, Programs exist, but oftentimes they exist within um, existing structures like schools or different programs. And, and, and some of those, in order to get access, um, there are several hoops that people have to jump through. And if you're not familiar with the process, it can be intimidating. So I'm operating on the belief that there's, there's, there's segments of the community that are either intimidated or don't have access to the existing structure because they don't even know how to start. Right. right. Um, so how do you reach those? And one of the things that many people have access to is social media. Yeah. Yeah. So using, using that as a mechanism for disseminating the information, but, but I'm, I'm not a good representative of, of the market that I'm looking to provide. So it's more of a case of um, first person narr narrative um, through social media posts, creating pro profiles that would be um, pretty much like an influencer, but, but demonstrating the, so it's not about the, the information, but it's how to use the information that I think is where the gap exists. Okay. Um, and my next step or what I'm looking to do next is obviously, um, reach into those affected communities and start asking questions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's good because thing. I don't want to be, I don't want to be one of the people who have a prescribed solution that right. is what I think will work. Right. It's, it's more important to understand, um, the community or the end users. Uh, what are their needs? What do they want? And um, and what does the solution look like? Yeah, yeah. No, that's wonderful. It's like very human centric, which is really really a good a framework to use. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, it, 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 it sounds really awkward because I'm still trying to figure all this sugar out. I mean, it, it's it's part of the process, right? Like part of the process of 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 kind of putting it together, especially with with the pivot. Uh, I think you sort of have had this uh, you're tied into this idea and then now you're thinking about how to how to transition it but still kind of stay true to your core sort of uh what you were doing before which i'm sure is very impactful personally to you during that six years that you were supporting um men's mental health and, and other aspects so i think it's 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 great to see that you're sort of like evolving the idea and there's still going to be a aspects of it that will materialize itself in the in whatever solution you you find from from doing that research and that asking those questions um and we'll probably get into some some questions speaking of questions a little bit in a little bit but i wanted to uh pass it on to to simi how about you tell us a little bit about your your journey 
and it doesn't have to be uh, entrepreneurship related, but just tell us a little bit about your journey. Sure. Um, so I um, just started at Edge as an administrative specialist two weeks ago, so I'm still pretty new. I am do, uh, working with Edge as part of my co-op. I just went to Sheridan as a human re um, for my the human resources post grad program. So I'm just working towards uh, completing this co-op, and that's the last part of that program. And um, I was interested in joining Edge just because of the unique perspective it um, provides into entrepreneurship and a lot of things that I didn't know a lot about. I know. Um, I already mentioned taking a course on entrepreneurship. This feels just like that for me because I think I'm learning so much more about it and listening to people's journeys just like makes you think about things from a different perspective. So like you mentioned, like seeing things are missing and wondering how you can kind of provide them. And that thought never used to occur to me. And I'm like, oh, wow, like it's definitely on my mind now. And then I think that um, it's been really great kind of getting to enjoy these sessions and I know that I've seen Sean in a lot of sessions and I know that what you're mentioning about um, social enterprises and how they are hard to kind of understand like I didn't know anything about them and I think that the sessions that I just been providing has like kind of made me more aware of them and I think your goal is really interesting because I do see how they're hard to kind of understand and they definitely are intimidating. So I definitely think that that goal is really definitely like a good perspective to look at it from. And I really look forward to seeing how you use social media to kind of put that out there and get more people aware of it. And yeah, that's just a little bit about me. Well, thanks for that. It sounds like you're, you're certainly learning lots about entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship. You're, you're definitely connecting with a lot of people. Um, and so and down the road, uh, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm be curious to ask you what, what your view is on becoming an entrepreneur, uh, because that's one way, right? Or, or our entrepreneur, uh, which is another way. And um, I'll take a moment to share a little bit about sort of uh, my journey as well. Um, prior to Edge, I ran a marketing agency for about three years, I had about seven clients uh, that had me on a contract basis, supporting them with digital marketing. It started off very similar to what you, what, uh, you Sean, and I are doing. I started um, with sort of like a research approach, just trying to understand, uh, you know, I, I thought there was a problem. And so I kind of went in and tried to do some free work with, with some, uh, some of my personal network. And after realizing that, and I was approaching it in an in a, in a, um, in a, in a, in a education format, so teaching others how to how to do digital marketing stuff. And it just happened that a lot of those folks didn't have the time. Uh, and I was focusing mostly at the time, I, it was the, the real estate industry, mostly uh, agents. And I realized that they, they, they weren't doing the stuff that I was teaching them. So uh, I kind of went back to the drawing board and asked, I, I had to obviously call them and meet with them and say, hey, noticing that like on your social media profiles, and this was 2014, let's say, I was like, hey, I noticed you're not posting and you're not really, um, doing what I what, what like I've been you know showing you every month uh, and so th th it came down to time uh, and, and they ha them having to visit various uh, listings and you know negotiating and all the things that an agent would have to do so I immediately said hey like what if I was to do this for you uh, how much would you be willing to pay and so it started with a hundred bucks a month and then I was doing that uh, and then I got introduced to other agents and then I got introduced to a brokerage office. And then, and so I, I started building packages that kind of would tailor um, those needs after I kind of understood the, the challenges within that space, within the real estate brokerage space. And then I thought about expanding. So I went door to door knocking and try, trying to figure out what other needs other industries had. So I ended up getting a dealership after that. Uh, and then I got an e-commerce brand and then I've got, I got a, a, a franchisor so they franchise other um businesses so they like they're like a franchise management company so i got that and so it just started evolving um over time and i, I was not doing most of the work i was i was knowledgeable in this in the strategy side i was knowledgeable uh by because i had to teach myself a lot of things 
but I wanted to scale it a little bit bigger. So I thought about taking a less money for myself and hiring contractors to do the work that were better than myself in, in other aspects of digital marketing. So I had about four or five people that I would constantly reach out to for, for the, for the contracts. And they were like, I was doing a lot of project management. So it went from myself to uh, a smaller sort of like boutique agency. And in 2000 and early 2017, I started questioning why I was doing this. Uh, and, and part of it was because I had taken a trip to my country I'm from Colombia and I saw a lot of, uh, you know, poverty and just a lot of ch social challenges that I, that I kind of, it kind of left a bitter taste. Uh, so when I came back, I was questioning why I was doing this in the first place. And like really the only answer to that was money. And I just kind of felt like I, there needed to be more to it. So I wanted a reset. I pressed the reset button. I closed, I, cl I, I ended up my contracts. Um, you know, I, I closed the business and I took another trip and I came back and didn't have another business idea. Um, I had some savings. So I decided to just like go back to school. I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to get a job. I just wanted to go back to school and see how far I can get with my, with those savings that I had. And, but I said, if I'm going to go back to school, I'm going to try to get involved in something that kind of has some meaning. And I, all I knew at the time was like entrepreneurship and the, the things that I have gone through that I had gone through in those three years. And I got really lucky. It just happened that edge in October, 2017 wasn't even called edge. Uh, it, it, it was just opening their doors. They were just in the process. So I went in and talked to my boss now and I said, Hey, this is what I can bring to the team. I can volunteer my time and I can help in marketing. And this, I kind of gave her a list of the things that I could do. And she gave me an opportunity. I volunteered till January, 2018, got a job starting helping develop the internal marketing and communication strategy for edge. Uh, and kind of that, met, that led on to having another role around building partnerships and community ties. And then that led on to having the opportunity to set up a mentorship program and, and build it and sort of improve it and connect other entrepreneurs to other entrepreneurs and other experts. And so that's kind of where, uh, like the, most of my time is spent now, just working at connecting people to other people and figuring out how to best support the community. Uh, to, to make it simpler, like you said, Sean, make it simpler to, to um, diffuse the, the information in, in, in a way that's, that's, uh, that's you know, practical, but also it puts a face uh, to the person when we connect others to others. So uh, I find it wonderful that you shared ACVN because I feel like I own, if you didn't know about ACVN, that's a great connecting point right there because you're, you're involved in the Afro-Caribbean food space. And that could be a great network to tap into as well for yourself as you continue to do research. Um, and so really awesome that you shared that, Sean. I appreciate that. Uh, and that's kind of my story. So I, I, I just wanted to maybe get us a little bit acquainted with each other. Uh, and then we can maybe move into... Um, some of the actual practical stuff around digital marketing and, you know, like using these tools and figuring out how to best leverage them and what's new and what's trending and what could, what could, what creative juices we can kind of share with each other or challenges that could end up, um, you know, transition into action items that could help you meet your goals. So, uh, Simi, if you want to, if you want to just flip over to the, to the, uh, the rounds, perfect. Thank you so much. You're already there. Um, the it's yeah you can go back the rounds yeah you got it uh and so the idea behind these rounds uh they're they're initially focused specifically around the theme so the theme obviously today is digital marketing and and really around sharing your challenges and sharing your questions or or even your shared experiences around using uh, tools like social media your website your blog or whatever you're working on on building out uh in terms of your digital marketing and how you're approaching that with your marketing goals um, uh, uh, as you sort of plan those out and kind of ask yourself, well, what, is, what, is, what are my practical marketing goals that I'm trying to hit short term, but also maybe work towards the longer term? So uh, I thought a good format would be, you know, we're only, we're, we're, again, we're a small group. So if, you know, whether it's uh, Io or Sean, I uh, would like to jump in and, and share where you're at with your current sort of digital marketing, where you, where you're at, where your head is at your, your entrepreneur head. That's probably in various places at the same time. Let's hone in into uh, the digital marketing and let's talk about where your current state is and then try to maybe, maybe, uh, you know, bounce off some ideas and kind of warm up through that. Uh, so if, if Io or Sean, do you want to, want to uh, take the floor? Uh, by all means. 
Okay, I'll jump in. Um, so, so as part of, um, so to give it a name, the, the name of, of the first and existing venture is called Springboard. And with that, I came up with a marketing strategy, a social media strategy, uh, of which I deployed. So, so I have a website, I have a blog that I'm updating. I have a social media presence on Instagram and Facebook. And up until maybe two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, when I came, came to the, call it what it is, a bit of an emotional crisis that I recognized that I wasn't getting the uh, tension or the traction that I was expecting or hoping for. Um, in fact, I was actually getting more interaction and more traction from women than I was from the target market that I was looking for, which really wasn't a surprise. Um, and so I decided that the best thing to do was to just park that idea. And I found myself um, falling into a rabbit hole. And that rabbit hole was basically just consuming massive amounts of social media, YouTube, Instagram stories. And one of the things that has been constant through, um, to use your word, Diego, through one, th one of the things that's been constant through the journey for the past six or seven years has been storytelling authentic, compelling storytelling that people can directly relate to. And when I was binging, call it what it is, when I was binging social media, one of the, um, I asked myself, what do I like, like, why am I doing this? Wh what am I attracted to? And I found myself becoming more attracted to storytelling, you know, people building and renovating minivans and living in them, People talk about their journey as a social media manager and what they're doing and not just their daily lives and what they eat for breakfast, but more together with, um, with a social media strategy, there's, there's either a month out or two months out and there's daily drops and, and, and there's a drip approach to providing the information. But it was more about that bringing the viewers along along a journey that was not just authentic, but resonated with, with the audience. It was more than just, oh, this is me trying, trying product X. It was the struggles I experienced in, first of all, finding product X and how it fits into to the bigger picture. And that's what I found myself becoming um, absorbed with. Mm -hmm. And it was the, the connectivity of that storytelling that resonated with me. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I began to be, and, and then when I looked at, at that sensation and looked at my own marketing strategy, the two were polar opposite, uh, total rookie move, um, really posting things that I, originally what I thought was was my attempt to connect with my audience with my community really wasn't mm. and um, so first attempts being what they are okay fine uh, and but the other thing I struggled with and this might be oversharing but there was the reluctant, the reluctance on my part to project my, my, myself into the storytelling process. And that, that was a real struggle in terms of, um, how far do I lean into the business and be the business versus the business and that I'm running it. And yet, when I looked at those same social media channels, whatever it was that I was drawn to, it was first person. Right. So then that's when I began to think that, okay, so maybe this should be more about not me telling people what they need but more demonstrating the journey of how someone goes about formulating the idea for a social enterprise. 
Yeah. And, and, and doing the drip approach. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yet still maintaining that whole, not necessarily mental health because that's now become such a, even though it's really important, it's, 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 it's almost like, you know, it's become low fat. It's becoming a term that's, that's being thrown around by everybody, yeah. but, but it's, it's, uh, social enterprise, entrepreneurial startup is prone to stresses and mental health I issues first and foremost because of the isolation. And, and adding COVID to it, that just exasperates it. But really it, pivoting in, in that it still has to do with your own personal narrative, your own personal story. Uh, but rather than pitching it to men only, men between the ages of 35 and 60, but rather pitching it to everybody, everybody who has the faint interest of starting something. Yeah, got it, got it. So that's that's a little bit of a long-winded, but that's sort of the origin story. Yeah, yeah. No, it helps a lot. Context is always great because it helps, again, it just really helps form uh, like a, like a, some idea of where you're at uh, and then kind of tying that into your sort of digital marketing efforts. But before I, cause I do have some follow-up questions for you, Sean, but before I do that, how about Ayo? Did you have any comments, any shared experiences or, or questions that you may want to want to hand over to, uh, to Sean? Um, honestly, it's really just a learning experience um, because I'm still pretty much in the early phases. So, uh, anything I listen to is pretty much uh, good information. Uh, you're already given everything that I could possibly, um, you know, jot down questions that I already have, or um, you're pretty much answering most questions I have. So um, I don't really have that many questions. I'm really still new to the digital marketing phase. So uh, okay. it's always good to just use any information I can get to just help my own sort of uh, growth or, you know, process. That makes sense. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so that's pretty. I'm I'm still just listening to everything and just you know, nodding my head and like, oh yeah, that's actually true. Okay, good. That's great. I mean, hey, you know, it sounds like you're 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 like a sponge right now. You're just kind of trying to capture as much as you can, uh, since you're finding yourself at this early 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 place. Um, so we're most likely we'll get into sort of where you're at in terms of your digital marketing journey and what you're currently doing um tactically to get your message out there uh and maybe maybe sean may have some shared experiences questions um how about you Sammy? do you have any any follow-up questions for for sean any comments any shared experiences um i think a lot of what sean said was like really interesting if you hear i'm i'm not familiar with trying to put something out there and i know that i've always heard a lot about how it is harder to gain traction than you think and there's so much about your audience and trying to reach that audience and right. I think it's interesting that you came to the conclusion that like maybe you need to branch out and that's just the reality of it and I know that COVID also did have a big impact where um, everything's just different now than we thought it would be. Um, I think Sean maybe I would ask you what kinds of platforms that you're specifically using and what kind of things that you're putting out there to kind of get attention and how has that been going in terms of the different social media platforms? Cause now there's so many options. Um, I've been, um, thank you for your feedback. Um, uh, right, right now I'm, I'm sticking to like the usual suspects, uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, and, uh, Twitter. Uh, but honestly it's, it's principally Instagram and, and Facebook. Um, with the media that I'm consuming, it's YouTube and Instagram. Um, I'm finding that different people, I don't want to use the term influencers, but I think we all know those people that exist in, in those space. There are, there are people that exist in Instagram and there's other people that exist in YouTube. And I don't for a, for a moment underestimate the amount of effort it takes to pr produce 15 seconds or 15 minutes of content. It's, it's an enormous amount of work. Um, but what I was doing up until this point was, was when I look back at it now, it was very basic. It was using Canva, 
as a tool to generate Instagram posts um, using I want to connect with my audience coming up with a storyboard that went out a month and then doing a drop every every other day um, and then connecting with with other users um, in the or connecting with the community interacting through the social media spaces um, and one of the reasons that I pulled back from that was like 90% of the engagement was women um, uh, the space is not only crowded, but it's like, it's just, it's occupied by women who are very creative, who are dropping content on a higher frequency than I was. Um, and I was, I, w I wasn't even focusing on followers. <laughs> I, even, I even thought maybe I should buy like 20,000 followers just to push me up there. Uh, but I haven't ruled that out yet. Um, and uh, so, so it, it wasn't the, it wasn't the, uh, the lack of professionalism or the lack of depth of, of the posting. I, I, I felt that maybe half of the stuff that was pushing out there was like really good, really original. Um, I saw it copied a couple times, which I was really flattered with. Um, so, so, so I, I knew I was on the right track in terms of, um, the medium, the way I was communicating it, uh, but it just wasn't reaching. And I knew that if I continued to, to, to push into the space, I would connect with, with the audience I wanted to, but it wouldn't be the outcome that I was aspiring for. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it, it, look, it doesn't take a rocket science to, uh, to feel that. Plus I was also very active in the other, the influencer space, which are established organizations, agencies across the province. And, um, they virtually gave me very little time of day no. uh, because it wasn't a priority because men are not banging on people's doors saying, Oh my gosh, I can't get my shit together. Can someone please help me? Um, that's not ha happening dudes drink to cope and then when things are finally coming apart then they try to find find it that's just the way that many men are programmed or right so so it, it's 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 still very passionate to me um but i was chasing after a demographic or or a segment of the population uh it's not that they don't want to be found but they'll find me when they're ready Right. Um, so then I began to think, what about contacting or, or reaching out to um, customers who are rushing into a space? And through my interaction with Edge, um, there's no shortage of people rushing into uh, starting a business, starting a social enterprise, as well as the there's there's a plethora of. Um, a plethora of um, um, online services and institutions um, uh, ready to help people. From my professional working life, uh, I, I'm aware of 20, 22 incubators within the province that, that help businesses get off the ground. Um, but the reality is um, a lot of those are focused on um, profit because Canada is a very risk averse province, uh, country. Um, typically investors are, are looking for not a sure thing, but they want a bigger return, but, and they also want a conservative return, which I, I, I think that if you look at the top 10, uh, startups of the year, a lot of them are tech, a lot of them are bio, a lot of them are environmental social enterprise doesn't necessarily always rank in the top 10. Um, and it's because funding is not necessarily accessible at that top level. Um, so there has to be a different way to fund them. Right. And, uh, and, and, and that together with what Ryan was talking about sort of created this idea that something that lives or starts within the social media can, uh, space could have um, uh, some legs both for the community at large as well as for marginalized communities and yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And, and, and all that's idea stage and I'm still working on, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the assignments within the, um, that, that like Garrett has, has, has been helping me with. So summit one, two, three, and four. Um, so I'm going right back to the drawing board and starting all over again with uh, new ideation. Who's the customer? Right. What's the message? Right. Yeah. Research, yeah. And having to, because I, I like, like I want to flush this out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and really it's using myself as a, um, and, and that's how I've always run the groups. The way that I describe it is I throw myself on the sword and my own experience becomes the, the narrative. And I, I guess if I could, um, Ayo, if I can say anything to you, um, it's that within the social enterprise space, more so than, than maybe a small business space, that within the social enterprise, there's a, whatever it is, it's, there's a direct connection to who you are as a person and the endeavor or the enterprise that you're looking to start. Right. And um, it's, 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 it's very strong. It becomes an extension of you. And um, that was another reason why I pulled back because I wasn't as much as I'm passionate about the idea of it, the running of it and, and the pushing is what I, like I had to be honest with myself that yeah, it, sure. it, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't meet ideally what I was feeling. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not, it certainly seems like you're on this personal journey of, 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 of branding your past experiences in some ways and, and being able to, to leverage digital media to, to come across as like you would come across in your, in your sessions when you were running them. When yeah, th that's a very, that's a very uh, poignant way of saying it. So yes, thank you. It, it it's, it's, um, I don't know how many other people struggle with that and how many people are, um, are, are, are willing to vocalize it. But, um, in, in the smaller group conversations that I've had with people and anecdotally, uh, I know I'm not alone in trying to tease out the personal journey from the journey of the business. Uh, yeah. especially when it's especially when the idea is is somewhat abstract and somewhat nuanced um if it was more tech based then i can see it being more qualitative yeah. and quantitative yet where where it's something more abstract it becomes um it becomes more more of a question than a product Right, right. Yeah, and it definitely needs to be contextualized a little bit more in, more in depth than a typical tech product that you could just sign up and learn the, 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 the problems or the things it solves for you. Um, I want to I wanna maybe shift over to Ayo. Maybe you can tell us uh, where you're at in terms of the things that you're doing on social media with regards to your, your venture, which, by the way, would be great to, to put a name to it when you get a chance, but I also want to make sure that if Sean, you want to share your social media platforms so that, you know, we can all kind of also look at the content that's going out, follow you, show you some love, um, reshare your stuff. Um, that'd be awesome. Cause I'm actively on social media and Instagram. Anything that, that resonates to me. Um, I am really quick to, to celebrate and elevate it, um, on my personal profile. Uh, so yeah, feel free to share that. Uh, but yeah, Ayo, what, back to you. What what are you? Where are you at with in terms of your approach as far as getting your message out? Uh, that's a good question. So um, so essentially, what we're trying to do is capitalize on um, social media um, because my target market is essentially you know twenty four seven on social media. So right, uh, it's usually the age of I would say eighteen to about twenty five ish, maybe. Um, it's people who go to school, um, who have full-time jobs, who obviously, um, people like me essentially. So I know the type of people I'm aiming for, which is a great point, as you said, Sean, in terms of, uh, pretty much 
making sure that you know your direct con uh, connection you know the enterprise you, you pretty much almost like you're one essentially like you, you pretty much know exactly what you're looking for um you know how to find the type of people you're looking for um so i would say social media as um as my main source of contact um just because that's the best way i can really know you know build personas you know try and figure out who exactly is the target audience for this type of business um the name of the business is party pack it's like um p-a-r-t-y-p-a-k uh essentially it doesn't it's not one of those businesses that gives you um pretty much what the idea is once you say the name um but obviously through um you know the logo you know just looking at the website and seeing what it is you can pretty much tell it's more like a food and entertainment, uh, food and entertainment uh, culture hub, essentially. Um, so the first, obviously my personal approach to this is through social media, like Instagram. Um, I don't really know much about Facebook to see if there, there's actually potential um, because I don't really have that many people use Facebook. I haven't really discovered the full potential of Facebook, um, but I would say definitely through Twitter, uh, to, uh, through Instagram, um that's those are the only two ones i would say for sure i don't know if snapchat really counts as one um but it's always something i'm always looking to explore just to see how i can get more people uh to discover about this i'd also yeah. say through um you know I, i'm also looking into social uh i'm also looking right. into oh, oh. seo uh just to see how i can get more people who are actually actively looking for these kind of businesses or this kind of services, I'd say, because a lot of people actually do. I know myself, I was pretty much looking into, uh, you know, businesses that offer uh, food delivery services like I'm looking for. Uh, I couldn't find a single one. I searched so hard. I couldn't find any business that had this um, service. So I thought to myself, why not just use social media and uh, search, up, uh, search engine optimization to try and pretty much determine um, where I can get audiences from and how I can pretty much market everything I'm looking market towards them yeah yeah absolutely so it seems like you're 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 taking advantage of social media uh and and, I, and maybe you could also share with us where where you know some of the socials that you uh you're actively posting on or just actively communicating your message mm -hmm. uh it, it also sounds to me like are you or that or maybe less of of um of a comment but more of a question mm -hmm. it, it it seems like you have a clear understanding of like your target uh, and are, have you chosen, have you chosen a specific platform that you're putting more for most of your effort in, or maybe the, like, like Sean said, the usual suspects, or are you also using other, other forms like a newsletter? What are you, what, what are your go-to platforms to, to get your message out there? Uh, the first one would obviously be social media, with, uh, which is Instagram, and the second one would be through Facebook. But I actually wanted to try using old-fashioned ways of reaching out to people because I also realized that my audiences are uh, people who live in condos. So I'm also looking at um, you know doing the whole mail marketing to try and reach out to them because I do receive a lot of mails in my uh, inbox about you know HelloFresh, you know um, DoorDash, those kind of things, and it's. Right. I don't, I don't have to go on the internet to actually look for those things. I actually look through my mailbox, to actually learn about those things. Right. So right. Um, that's another way I actually want to explore because I know target market 18 to 25, a lot of these people are pretty much people who are probably in school, don't have, uh, you know, families, they stay in condos. Um, very, that's honestly the next go-to after social media. Yeah, I mean, like, it's great to hear that uh, you're considering traditional forms of, of um, marketing, uh, going out with print stuff uh, and, and trying to see how that, how that, uh, what, that what result that, uh, that brings to you. Um, in, in terms of maybe we can move towards any, you know, any idea that you're kind of looking to hear a different perspective on, and this is maybe goes to both you and Sean, anything that you sort of wanted to run by just to maybe, or a challenge that you're facing, uh, whether it's a tactical one or more around the st strategy of how to approach it, um, that uh, you know, uh, maybe I could, I could, uh, we could also share our our perspectives. Actually, um, Ayo, can I ask you some clarification questions? Of course, please. Um, so, the business that you're referring to is it um, is it food delivery? Or is it something other than that? 
It's food delivery, but it also um, capitalizes on the entertainment industry. So the it's entertainment not, industry. Yes, but it's 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 catered towards Afro Caribbean. So it's very very, uh, it's very then it's it's a niche market. So it's very, okay. very niche. So so I'm glad that you specified that it was ethnic centric. Yeah. Um, so um, there's a company that I that I would not suggest, but I would um, offer as an example. It's it's called Food Highway. And um, uh, a couple of years ago, the office that I was working at um, was actually down the street or down down the hall from Food High Highway. And Food Highway was started up by three Chinese guys uh, from mainland. Um, and and my experience with China was that I was working there for three months last year. And um, what they did is they had um, and still have a food delivery business. And at the time, they had something like eight um, uh, smart cars that were brand branded. And they catered exclusively to um, foreign Chinese mainland students. And they were a delivery service for Chinese food, Korean food, but specifically for that tar target market. And they used apps. Now, in, in China, there's in urban markets, there's very little use of cash. It's mostly all digital on, on, on their phones using an app called WeChat. And what they did is they exploited that. So they exploited the proliferation of, of an app that is wide, widely used by the community, the mainland Ch Chinese folks. And they marketed to them constantly. And um, so, so that's one thing. The other thing is I know... Um, I was at a dinner party maybe at the beginning of the year and um, I, I met with a guy who worked in security who was out, who was out packaged and he got into doing um, uh, Uber Eats. And when Uber Eats started, um, I remember reading a lot about how restaurateurs and, and other people within the food space were um, feeling gouged by the delivery service service. And <clears throat> I was talking to him about doing something similar to what the, the, the food highway was doing, but in a more localized way in terms of a food delivery plat platform that was targeting local restaurants, like maybe in the city of Brampton or maybe in the city of Stouffville but something that was more local because whatever Uber Eats was doing or whatever the other platforms were doing, they were, um, the restaurateurs were, they certainly weren't getting rich by it. Um, and, and then I think what that, the question I would leave you with is who is your customer? Is your customer the, the restaurant or is it the person who's ordering the food? Well, I mean, the way I look at it, I believe it's for both parties, right? Because um, the first one, which is the customer, um, obviously it's for them in the sense that they're hungry, they get the food essentially, right? Um, mm -hmm. The business is, um, it's just a different way of reaching out to specific types of um, customers. So they have, uh, it's more of building awareness for their, comp for their um, businesses through um, the, the app or the website. So it's kind of catering to both. Um, it's almost kind of like Uber Eats where, you know, businesses who uh, usually rely on just physical location can now go on Uber Eats and, and you know, build on their uh, awareness. Um, just as customers who can also go on Uber Eats and see the, uh, the, you know, numerous amounts of options that they have and feel free to always pick and choose from whichever restaurant you want to choose from. What would be the incentive of your platform what would be the incentive for um like a business to use yours versus uber eats or doordash or something like that well uber eats gives the service of um what they do is it's it's um it's pretty much just as you order you get the one-time purchase of, of of a meal right it's just mm -hmm. fast food this is more of like um it's it almost works like a nutrition plan or like a meal plan 
where it's kind of like it's not it's not only just one meal it's kind of like it's it's almost like bulk um it's almost like bulk food delivery so they have to come up with a plan a schedule and then they pretty much just go through um the restaurants who only do or who initially they only did um you know single meal orders and then they have a different market where you know people come and say hey i have you know this number of people who are looking to uh you know have bulk food being delivered to them it's not something that Uber Eats or any other uh, business does. Oh, I think I get it now. It, it's yeah. So, so yeah. If, like if I have a, a, in poor credit, there's a Greek restaurant called Colossus of Rhodes. So are you proposing that, let's say, for example, Colossus of Rhodes, if they, if they have on their menu, say, you know, platter number five, mm-hmm. that, um, that what they would do is sell all of the ingredients for the consumer to assemble and prepare platter number five at their residence, that that's what they would order? That is definitely, that's the first option. That's, so there are two types. There's either where you can actually prepare everything where you don't have to actively go out and buy all the ingredients. Mm-hmm. And there's the second part where you don't want to, you know, have to still make the food and then they actually make the food for you. Wow. So it's traditional cool. food delivery and making at home so there'd be two yeah. two yeah. two two different price points one of them would yeah. resemble uber eats the other one would right. re- resemble hello fresh exactly yeah That's exactly. Exactly. and then like uh, larger quantities i guess exactly okay so yeah the ubers I, I uber eats pretty much once or twice a week and uh, i know that the the only thing that kind of would resemble that which i don't think is very clear it, which is not directly uh, uh competitor it's just they offer the um, groceries really mm-hmm. but that's not too relevant um to what i think one of the, i think one of the things that covid has done is it shifted the conversation of different businesses into the mainstream yeah. okay. last year nobody really cared what the restaurant thought or what they were experiencing mm-hmm. but during covid um uh, the experiences of business owners, be it food service or something else, that they're actually given a platform to share their relationship with Uber Eats and other types of delivery services where they're using that to sell their product, but they're barely getting by. It's, it's, it, it reminds me of Groupon, where Groupon was supposed to get you additional traffic, but really what it right. did is it, is it got you customers that probably normally weren't going to be your customers anyways. They yeah. were just showing up for a deal. Yeah. And, and, and that's not a growth strategy. No. And maybe, A.O., what you're talking about is something that is not just a sale, but it's, it's something that provides um, a customer engagement and possible like a different uh, growth strategy that the restaurant might have overlooked in terms yeah. of not just having the customer enjoy, you know, Colossus of Rhodes platter number five, but might them, but might help extend that the non Greek customers into understanding more about Greece and Greece culture and the food and the experience. And maybe that fits into the, you know, the entertainment side of it. Yeah, that's a good point. I would add to that as well, because I, I think right there is where we, where we can bring back the conversation around digital marketing and, and leveraging that the tools that are out there to tell that story mm. to, to bring about you know whether this is where whether what sean is mentioning is is aligned with with what you envision um AO, or whether it's something that you're you may be considering to explore but i think that experience that that sort of like sharing that cultural um, those cultural snippets that may may be valuable to someone looking to explore uh, the Greek culture, looking to explore the you know the Afro Caribbean culture more in depth, and by by le- by by being so close t- closely tied to their love for food, they they may they may be willing to 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 uh, open your app because they not only get you know uh, an experience they not only get the food itself, but they get an experience tied along uh, to that where they, they get educated, they learn about the culture, they learn where their ingredients come from. They, they just have all this information that they, they may themselves be 
we're, we're actually looking for, but they couldn't do it anymore because they can't go to the restaurant anymore as, as we would before where we could ask the, talk to the owner and say, Hey, you know, how was your journey? What, how did you come up with the idea? Or like, you know, ask the, ask the waitress or the waiter, Hey, how, how does this, how does this plate come together? And, you know, and, and so I think it's, it's definitely something that you could consider. I think I feel I feel like you're still at a point where you're kind of trying to confirm all these different uh, pieces of information through through some of the, the research that you're doing, some of the some of the surveying, some of the, those having those conversations. Whether you know, like, is there a need for this? Is this is this is this really something that is there a group of people that that exist that would not only be not only find your value proposition. Um, you know, desirable in that sense where they would be willing to become your early adopters in, in some ways, but also is it feasible for you and is it feasible for them and feasible for the, for the, for the restaurant itself? Uh, so obviously there, that's a bit beyond the digital marketing side. That's more around, that's prior to the, this getting really, really serious about your tactical execution and implementation of your digital marketing plan looking at whether what you're doing and trying to hone in better on the problem and its solution. But what Sean said is super valuable when the time comes for you to start to really think about, well, how do I share this message uh, across um, the platforms that I'm using? Hey, yo, can I suggest something radical? Yeah, of course, please. Um, and, and I'm not trying to hijack your business idea, but what if it was, um, what if the business was a platform that would like highlight restaurants or businesses and would give the, 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 the audience, the subscribers or whoever's watching it an opportunity to sort of get not just an understanding of who the restaurant tour is, but, but the process behind it that would sort of like tease the idea to the customers about either ordering or visiting or um, sort of engaging with the restaurant tours. So using that example of Colossus of Rhodes, that whole, you know, the typical story came to the country, da, 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 but more than that, something that would be engaging from the social media side that would keep um, uh, viewers engaged. <laughs> That's that's where we kind of want to use uh, Instagram and YouTube as a platform where we can you right. know, not only just get people to just come order food, but actually come learn about it. Right. That's where the entertainment bit comes into play. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Be yeah. Because that changes it completely. That changes it into a sort of like um, building a following, building a build, building a community where where your business then becomes almost like almost like an aggregator or even a marketplace where, where it's, um, forgive me for, um, you know, the idea just popped in my head, but you know, AO with the Mayo is the, is the first <laughs> thing that came to mind. And, and, but something, something that would be associated with the platform that would be a hosting for a variety of storytelling that people can order from, engage from, and and da 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 da, and um, you know um, everything from Cabana Pool Pool Bar to you know Pizza Hut. There's, there's certainly lots of good. I mean, I mean for sure, there's some really good stuff there, Sean. And and I I know we're sort of coming close to the end of the session today, but I I. Part of this is to encourage to continue the conversation, whether uh, AO you want to connect with, with Sean or Sean you want to connect with AO and continue the conversation because there's some really good ideas. And I think both of you from just just uh, hearing the conversations, Sean certainly sounds like you're looking to continue to figure out how to bring about that personal narrative through the power of, of social media. And you're sort of working on that right now. And, and, mm. and Ayo, you're also in that process of figuring out how to best share, uh, share your message. Mm. So I, I hope that this session, even though it's a small group session, I, I hope that there's some interesting flow of ideas and that there's mm. action items that come out of it and, and ultimately connections 
Um, I did put Food Highway in there. I, I couldn't quick couldn't find their their website, so that Ayo you could explore it. But maybe Sean, if you if you want to if you if Ayo if you want to connect with Sean, he can send you that that um that information. And and if if you also want to share your your social media uh, platforms for your for your uh, venture, that also be great again to to stay in the loop with you and to share your content and just to be a, a part of your community as well. So I, 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 I'll leave a, a couple of minutes for, for any linking or any URLs to pop up in the chat as the chat will be saved and it will be distributed uh, in a thank you email as well as a link to, to watch this uh, Entro Monday session for those who couldn't tune in today. Um, aside from that, I just want to be, I want to thank everyone for coming in today. Uh, and again, I hope that uh, in, the, in, the, in the, the process of discussing, uh, continue to kind of go through those, go through that process of taking actions and, and, and sounds like everyone is. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we can wrap it up now. And thank you, Simi, for all the awesome behind the scenes work for also sharing your journey as well. Super helpful to have you, uh, you know, helping us <laughs> with the Zoom stuff because I, I'm not the best multitasker. Uh, so thanks for that. And I hope everyone has a great uh, evening ahead. Thank you. You as well. Bye.